So what did you guys think of the face sale today? It was a lot of fun. It's good to see everyone again. I loved it. Uh, it's always a good time. Daniel and Angelina do such a good job. So you are going home with one of the high selling lots, yes? No, she is oh, going you home. Are. Right? <laughs> I knew that's what I wanted, and we got her. Yeah. <laughs> so it was one of Justin Hansen's? Yes. And tell us a little bit about it. What did you like about it? Um, I just like his breeding program. I love the horn shape, I love the horn direction, I love the. He always has them very well conditioned, um, mm -hmm. and I'm just always impressed with the girls he produces. So. The fact that they don't go into too many sales whenever we see one of the face sale because he's a yearly supporter mm -hmm. we always like to pick him up if we can <laughs> so do you know if you're gonna take her back and breed her to and everything she's bred right now so we got a little time to decide okay. so what what do you like most about the face sale compared to some of the other sales you've been to it's close to home <laughs> how long <laughs> did it take you to get here uh, about 20 minutes nice yeah are there other sales that you guys go to Oh yeah, we love the uh, Red Macomb sale, um, Fort Worth sale. We really had a lot of fun when they had the Vegas sale, but um, and the Rocky Mountain Select sale. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yep. yeah, we like to support the industry. So being up here in Oregon, tell us a little bit about how you got started in Longhorns. You know, because that's not as common as a lot of the <laughs> Texas customers and everything. You we, want to go with me? We knew that we wanted to have registered breeding stock. I mean, we know that we like to maybe have to cull at some point, but we wanted to not have to cull quite so heavily. So if we could get some good breeders in and just produce. So then we looked for genetics and um, had decided, I told Scott, the only thing I don't want horns. I don't want a dehorn, so I don't want horns. <laughs> and um, he was searching Craigslist up here and found a little herd of long horns. And it was a bull and two cows. And their cows, so and we said, I, he said, hey, we don't have to dehorn, so let's go look at them. So we looked and bought them, and we're hooked, and have since upgraded the herd quite a bit. But <laughs> it was, it was our start. Did you, Scott, did you know that you always wanted long horns? So I grew up on a, a farm in eastern Oregon, and we always had a commercial cows, okay. and um, I thought I would have cows, but I didn't know when. And I thought they would be Simital or some other breed. And then um, we saw the Longhorns and I just fell in love with them. It's funny because my dad, I shipped some to his house when I got some one time. And I was going to pick them up four days later and he was making so much fun of me about these Longhorns. And they're not a real beef breed. By the time I went to pick them up four days later, he's like, well, you could leave that one and that one. That would be just fine with me. So I, I tell you, anyone gets hooked on them. They're just great. So does your dad have some? He doesn't yet, but uh, he's still holding strong. He says he's too old to start a new, okay. a new, uh, a new venture. And so both you, both of you have bought at sale, so you both kind of pick out your favorite things. So which one of you owns the longest horn cow in your herd? Mm. <laughs> of course me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that differs. It, oh, it, it goes back and no, forth. <laughs> it, Last measurement, it was me. Yeah, and so is this a little contest? Yep. Okay. It is. We're an eighth of an inch apart right now uh -oh. between my longest horn cow and her longest horn cow. So but mine me. has color. Hers is solid red, so I think I win. <laughs> the most part. Uh, mine threw a pretty nice pass. Say, so. Until your stars throw a flashy baby. Exactly. exactly. So <laughs> tell us about these two cows. Uh, EOT Super Mary we bought um, at the first big sale we went to in Vegas, which had some Valentine's in Vegas, so it was there. And Scott bought the colorful cow, and I bought the long horn cow. <laughs> so uh, he gave me a hard time for buying a solid red, but I like her. She's worked out. She's uh, she's worked out well. <laughs> and who's the other one? My cow, um, Rio Belinda, we bought just last fall at the Horn Showcase, um, and we bought her online through this one company called Hired Hands, <laughs> Hired Hands Live, and uh, we. We didn't know what to expect. We, we knew we liked her. She had a beautiful heifer calf by side. When she showed up, it's one of those, yes, I did the right thing moment. So that was pretty okay. cool. We measured her right away because I was pretty confident that she was going to be longer than my wife's, but <laughs> she failed me just day. slightly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I was ahead for a day. <laughs> so what are your favorite cows that you 
my personal favorite is PCC Special Event. Uh, we also bought her at the Vegas sale, and she threw me two straight beautiful heifers. I just love the brindle, spotted brindle on her. Um, her disposition is just great, and she's just a gentle, easygoing cow. And that's what I like about all Longhorns, but especially that cow. She's really performed for us. I am partial to Super Mary, but um, I also uh, am a big fan of Moon Glow. We bought her from Alex D's. Uh, she's 7-Eleven Moon Glow. She's um, thrown us some just beautiful bull calves, unfortunately, but this year we finally got a heifer out of her, and she's colored up with beautiful white and red spots and splotches. And so, um, she's just very calm, very regal. She's got a thicker horn and kind of more upright, but she's just very beefy and tall and Yeah, we both like big, big bodied cows with a lot of horn. We're really focusing more on the, the twists these days, it seems like. And I, I kind of added a new wrinkle this year, and we both agree black and white is one of our new priorities, too. So it's been, been kind of fun that we're on the same page most of the time. Yeah. So, what do you both do outside of Longhorns? <laughs> I run a landscape contracting company with about 45 guys and um, that's what pays for our longhorn habit, so I have to keep doing that until I uh, I can sell more cows, I guess. And I'm a small animal veterinarian in Carlton, Oregon. Are the kids pretty active with the longhorns? Do they like having them around? Um, our daughter likes showing them. She shows mm -hmm. we only have two fairs locally, um, and so uh, she shows at the Deschutes County Fair every year. Um, and our son is not interested unless there's money involved. So <laughs> he fed this winter. We had, had him sighted, sighted off, housed off site at a dairy barn okay. and had to drive about 30 minutes to get there. So we convinced him on the days he was available to do it for money. Yeah, he, <laughs> nice. he likes the Longhorns when there's money involved. And so, so we should, Jamie and I should probably know that this is the first pickup yes. truck confession we've done in a Tesla. It's pretty so awesome. Whose, whose car is this? Not, it's mine. Is your car? <laughs> I'm rarely allowed to drive it. Oh, so Jamie, you're nice. extra special, right? <laughs> He's allowed to drive it. I just don't like him driving when I'm in the car. Because uh, he makes me sick. But the coolest thing about these things is you can do things to them remotely. And so every time she lets me use the car, she'll turn down the sunroof or turn up the heat from while she's <laughs> while she's eating dinner. And I'm in the middle of downtown Portland. I'm like, what's going on with this thing? That's funny. That's funny. Do you guys have any advice for new breeders or maybe advice for new breeders in this part of the country who are just getting started? Well, it is a little bit harder in this, this part of the country because we don't have as many breeders. Um, but taking advice from the local breeders is really important. And we feel like we've tapped into that pretty well. Everyone's just been awesome to us. We've been in it for, this is year number six. Um, Alex Dees, Angelina and Daniel Fay. Um, that's just a couple of people in this area that have helped us. But um, I think the best advice we ever got, and we of course didn't follow it at the beginning, but we were buying everything we could sell that we just thought, oh, look how colorful that cow is or whatever. And instead now we're more focused on maybe spending a little bit more, getting fewer cows, but getting better cows. And I would preach that to anyone that uh, is starting is, and we actually did just say that to a guy at the face sale. He's a good friend of ours. He only has one cow. It's um, not as great. And uh, we said, hey, this one, if you're only gonna get one more, pay a little bit more for it and, and get a good one. So, so you can use it in your program. So, and he, he took our advice, so. Just go to as many events as you can. Get to know your local breeders. Um, it's it's been a lot of fun getting to know people in the area that we otherwise wouldn't have crossed paths with. I mean, Daniel and Angelina um, have become really close friends of ours just because now we have so much in common. <laughs> so, it, going to their sale, going um, out to sales in other parts of the country, just kind of getting to see what's out there, what's uh, what's selling and what's not, it helps to look at your herd with a better mindset. And, objective <laughs> that and join the Northwest Longhorn Association because you'll learn a lot from those people or any association that you're you're um, affiliated with will help you so that that I we've gotten a lot from as well 
All right, so we usually end our pickup truck confessions with um, rapid fire questions. So you just have to answer the first thing that comes to mind. So which one of you wants to go first? I'll go first. You'll go first? Okay. Oh, no, no. Um, <laughs> what's your go-to comfort food? Macaroni and cheese. What about you? Um, anything with beef. <laughs> Steak. <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, strength. Super strength. Seeing through clothing? Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Sometimes. <laughs> um, are you a morning person or a night owl? Night owl. Morning. <laughs> Opposites. What's your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve? Um, not having laundry put away. <laughs> not having someone do my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> um, when flying, what is the appropriate time to be at the airport before ah, the flight leaves? Two hours <laughs> at least. Right before the gate closes. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, right? What a waste of time. Exactly. Who wants to hang out in an airport? Sorry, he made me ask that one. <laughs> uh, favorite TV show? Uh, the Goldbergs. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, shoot, pressure's on. Uh, something on HGTV, probably. Oh, yeah. Fixer Upper. Because yeah. I met Chip. Did you? Yes, he's awesome. Oh, that's right. You were staying at an Airbnb. Yeah, cool dude. <laughs> All right, last one. Um, hidden talent. What's your hidden talent? I don't have any like hobby or and be embroidered. That's my hidden talent that nobody sees. There we go. What my, you mine is probably being an opera singer. Really? Yeah. Can we, can we hear a single? Let's hear this. I would never, you never hear me sing. Let's keep that as a hidden talent. It's not a talent. It is not. Um, hidden talent, I I haven't found it yet. I, I'm uh, artistic. Can talk to anyone. That's not a hidden talent. No, that is true. <laughs> is there anything else that you want the people watching to know about your program? I think we just, we love showing off our Longhorns. We love improving our program. Um, anytime anyone's in the area, feel free to look us up. We uh, we know our wine, so if you like wine, we can definitely take you around. And we love to eat, so we can definitely uh, take you to different restaurants. So come and visit us anytime. Yeah, we're really excited. We're about to close on our first ranch where we have all oh, the cows awesome. together. So. All right, so we can turn this off and Jamie can see what this max is.